This is something I need to find time to do, is to read this manual. These guys feel nice. Good grip too. It has been two weeks since I bought this car and I have not driven it enough. I only have 129 miles on it because my work is just crazy. Today's a nice day. Just want to go out to have a little drive and I need to go to the hardware store to pick up something. I need to get a 19 inch millimeter socket because that one went into my trunk for the spare tire situation but I also need some gloves. I need mediums. Here we go. 19 impact socket. Hey, that works. Just these two. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sorry about the wind. It's a little windy today. Now, there are a few things I want to do right off the bat. One of them is the um, interior halogen light bulbs. The map here, the trunk, and the courtesy door lights. They just look depressing. Second thing I want to do is get a decent looking and fitment of a steering wheel cover. The GR86 and BRZ, their steering wheels are smaller than most cars out there. The diameter is about 14 and a quarter inches. I saw one that you could actually, it's like a kit you can buy and you kind of, it has tape on the inside and you, you would have to stitch it or sew it or something. Um, I'm not sure about that, so I just got this little $5 one from Walmart. This covers it for now. It will do the job until I find something permanent. I'm still on the original tank of gas when I left the dealership. I have half left still. I need to burn this off. The reason is all the dealerships, everybody, when they when they go fill up the gas tank for the customers to pick up their, their new car, they just put cheap gas in it. So I asked my sales guy, he told me he put 87 octane and I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I just need to burn this off and put 93 octane in it. Now the clutch in this car is a little bit different. I don't want to say bad at all, it's just different. It's the uptick and the, um, the feel of the clutch and the gas pedal and the shifter it's just a little bit different of an animal. I, I, it's not good or bad, it's just different. I'm used to, I've been driving Hondas for 20 some years. The shift knob is nice and tight, but it's still nowhere close to my FK8. It's just, Honda just knows what the hell they're doing when it comes to the shifter. And the seat is pretty good. I'm pretty well seated in my driver's seat. Although it's not like the FKA. Now, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to keep comparing to the Civic Type R. They're kind of different cars. That car is even faster, but the, the seat in the FKA is just like, I feel like I'm sitting in a kangaroo's pouch. It's just comfortable and I'm tucked in well. But this is not bad at all. Right now, the car is on all season tires because it's, it's winter time. Now, the car it does feel a little more spongy when I two corners but it's it's really good because the chassis is really good I have about almost 800 miles to go in the break-in period so this gives me time to read the manual and learn the dynamics of this car and when springtime comes April or May I'll put the summer set back on and then I can really truly feel what this car is capable of and since I'm in the break-in period, there's a setting in the, in the screen that you can set it to, it beeps at you, let you know that, hey, you're coming, up, you're coming up to this RPM, you need to shift. So right now I have it set to 3,500 RPM that it lights up in orange. When I get to 3,500 RPM, it beeps at me, letting me know that I need to shift. Whoa. There's an Integra Type S.
<laughs> Did you get a good price? Uh, it's a dev car, it's not even mine. Oh, yeah. alright. So, why did I buy this car? Well, I have to take you back to the car that I traded in for. Now, I bought my Acura RX-X Type S brand new in June of 2005. It was a little small but powerful front wheel drive coupe to have. I mean, it had 210 horsepower, 143 foot-pound torque. I kept the car pretty much stock, but I upkept all the maintenance myself things that you can think of I have my hands on I have fun and I learn a lot about cars but but after almost 19 years and well over 200,000 miles I had enough I was happy with it I was content because I took care of it and it took care of me and you know I was ready for the next chapter so what's new and affordable fun lightweight rear wheel drive cars are out there right now it's pretty much either this or the ND2 Miata. This is still the recipe. I mean, you know, front engine, rear wheel drive, lightweight, but everyone wants their big and, you know, powerful SUVs out there right now. And even the sedans today are big and heavy. This formula is pretty much dying. It's dying off and people know about to go extinct. So, you know, for reference, uh, I think it was uh, the two year of supply of GR86 in the UK was sold out in 90 minutes, something like that. Uh, but you know, just think about that, in 90 minutes, they're all sold out, that's crazy. Driving this car, it, I mean, in this car, it's the interaction, I, I, it's the feel through a corner, I can feel what the car is doing, the car just want to dance. And because this car has almost a front and back 50-50 weight distribution and it's just a take over 2,800 pounds, it rotates really well. It's so fun to chuck around. I mean, you have to sit here and drive it yourself to feel. I just can't explain this through a video. But every time I come out of a corner, I just often find myself thinking, where is my next one? I just want to do it again. And also, I don't really have to slow down as much as other cars do because I'm so light and I can just maintain my speed through the corner and get on the gas sooner. It's just so delightful to drive. 228 horsepower and 184 foot-pound torque is what I would call enough. I mean, if you want a drag race or you really care about 0-60 to 60 times, then don't buy this car or you bought the wrong car. I mean, I guess I could use 240, 250, but do I really need that as where it stands now out of the box? I think, I think I'm think i good. I'm good with this setup. I mean, we have gotten to a point where we just excuse weight and weight just doesn't even cross our minds anymore. I mean, people just think of power, you know, 400, 400 500 horsepower. They just think of power and power with a bigger bone setup will indeed hide that extra mass, but only to a point though because at the end of the day, you have to manage that extra weight and weight kills the fun. It's just physics. I mean, the universe doesn't care what you think and how you feel about it. I mean, this is the equivalent of asking a well-trained linebacker to perform figure skating moves on ice. I mean, he can do it, he's just not exactly thrilled about it. You need someone light and nimble and that's what this is. I mean, I can just use the power that I have here. I mean, what the hell am I gonna do with 500 horsepower, why? So I can brag about quarter mile time or 0 to 60 time. I mean, it's cool, but seriously, are you having fun? Uh, I mean, are you? I mean, be honest with yourself. You can't tell me just throw more money at a more expensive sports car and the fun engagement levels go up. I mean, you just can't. They're not that relatable. Now on to the engine, the RTV issue. Am I, am I worried about it? I mean, a tiny little bit, but the actual number of cars out there that have the problem is really small. It's like less than 20, I think. And I think it's way overblown on the internet, but 
I mean, I guess I'll just change the oil and filter more frequent and check between the filter pleats and see what comes out of the oil pan. I mean, the way I look at it is life's just too short to have fun. You will never find a perfect car, really. I mean, there will, I think, always be small things that you find undesirable or unattractive, but you just work with what you have. This car is the middle finger to all the big SUVs and heavy sedans out there, signaling that I'm having more fun than they do. And you know what the best part is? I didn't pay too much money for the fun, and my consumables, the tires, the brakes, the rotors are gonna be cheap. I mean, look at this. This cabin looks inexpensive, but it has no gimmick BS, no shiny services, there's nothing here to wow you. Toyota and Subaru want you here for one thing and one thing only, and that is driving. The GR86 will ever so slightly to punish you when you do it wrong and you kind of promise yourself that you will do better in the next corner. This car will teach you how to become a better driver if you're willing to learn. It's like the car saying, hey, come find my edges, come on. You're getting there, you're getting close, come find me. The whole reason is that I'm just smiling. That's the reason I own this car.